because we're talking about conserving energy today, I wanted to introduce a really quick topic called embodied energy. Um, and does anyone know what that means? Not really. Embodied energy. Um, what that means is, and I have a very technical approach to it, what it means is all the energy that goes into a building or a high rise or a bicycle or a cabinet or anything starts with the harvesting of the fossil fuels and then it's the trucking it to the plant and it's making the widget and then it's trucking to another plant and making the bigger widget and then it's taking it to Lowe's and then the contractor gets it and they bring it back and then they build the thing and then you take care of the thing and all that energy goes into your building, into your house, and it's all counted for and it's all embodied in there. And so that's, when we talk about embodied energy, that's, that's all the energy from the very birth of concrete to the time you got your new concrete deck. It's, that's what embodied energy is. So in that case, preservation is def definitely conservation. Um, by not tearing down buildings, we're conserving all the embodied energy that we've already got. And if we threw that away, 60% of our local landfills are made up of construction waste and demolition waste. So we would definitely be throwing away a lot more energy than just um, boards and sticks if we threw away uh, an existing property. So the Secretary of Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties, I don't know if you any heard, heard of that, but that's basically the holy grail of how we treat historic properties. And there's not too many rules and guidelines, there's some, um, but some of the most important ones of the Secretary of Interior Standards is that we preserve historic materials or historic fabric, which we call it. Hi, Mary. <laughs> and also we preserve the building's um, character-defining features. So it's a little bit two different things, the materials, and then the features that make the character of the building. So these are two historic houses here in Hawaii, and they both have very different character-defining features. Um, each one has a distinct roof, distinct windows, distinct railings, distinct landscape, but you can see um, their character-defining features are quite different, right? and important. So if we were to mess with one of these houses and put the other roof on it, it wouldn't look quite right, right? Also character defining features of historic buildings were in themselves energy conserving. Usually large windows, big overhangs, um, tall ceilings, transoms to let air in, um, screen porches, they all were energy conserving at the time. So those are additional character-defining features of historic buildings that we're happy about. And I have a slide about toilets, and I think that is not my next slide. So I turn it to one of you guys. Heard it. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Scott Cooney. I'm with Pono Home. Uh, we're a local company that does energy efficiency work, uh, retrofits. Speak into this microphone to you. OK, so we're, we're doubling up on the microphones. Um, so I'm Scott Cunha from Pono Home. We're a local energy efficiency company specializing in the residential space. Um, I'll give you a little uh, brief background on our company here in a minute. But um, basically, just to take a quick look at the energy uh, landscape here in Hawaii, I think most of us know that uh, most of our energy is produced um, by burning fossil fuels to, uh, to produce energy here. Um, what, this is a bit of an old graphic here on the left. But more or less, the, the storyline is kind of the same. Most of our money leaves the state to buy fossil fuels to create energy here. And so uh, for so many reasons, probably the most of which is economic, uh, we want to get to 100% renewable energy uh, by 2045. We were the first state in the country to, to do this, to, to proclaim that we were going to uh, mandate 100% renewable energy by uh, such an ambitious target. Um, as it appears, we're actually going to hit it much faster than that. So uh, things are moving very quickly, which is awesome. Uh, you can see here the chart is broken down by island. So Kauai, Kauai Oahu, Molokai, et cetera. Um, the bar on the bottom says RE potential. That's renewable energy potential. The bar just slightly above that says demand. So that is existing demand for energy island by island. This is a little hard to see, but you can see that in Kauai at the top, demand is pretty small. Renewable energy potential is also pretty small, but it's enough to meet current demand. 
On Oahu, the demand bar, the gray one there, goes way out to the right, and the total renewable energy port uh, portfolio potential here on Oahu is much smaller. So that means if you put solar on the roof of every house, uh, do a couple of new wind farms, et cetera, we're not even going to come close to meeting our current demand here on island. Every other island, the demand is far exceeded by the potential. So the potential to fulfill Maui's uh, demand for energy with renewables is 100% uh, possible. Just on Oahu, it's a, it's a lot more difficult. There's a lot more people here and a lot less space. Um, so what that means is we have two options. One is an inter-island cable, which we've tried. Uh, and the, the other is to reduce overall demand. Um, so I, I gave the same slide at the legislature at one point and asked for a show of hands among legislators about who wanted to try to do an inter-island cable again and didn't get a single hand. So I think um, energy efficiency is clearly the way to go. We can reduce that demand bar. Can everybody see that one next to Oahu? We can reduce that demand bar just by using energy efficiency and, and smart technologies. Uh, uh, my name's Tony Kaywall. I'm with Hawaii Energy, uh, and I will be talking to you a little later on in this uh, presentation. But so this, this slide, it's, it looks pretty complicated. Um, the, the bar graphs, it, it, it shows how much energy costs, OK? So if you look to the very, very right, and you see energy efficiency, what that is, it's 2.2 cents per kilowatt hour. That's what that, what that really tells you is that all these other sources of energy cost a lot of money, OK? That is money to build some of the infrastructure, wh whether it's a solar farm, a wind farm, geothermal, uh, whatever. But with energy efficiency, it costs only a fraction of that. So basically, you, you hear the old adage, uh, a penny saved is a penny earned. And then with energy, it's the cheapest form of energy is the energy you never have to use in the first place, right? So th that 2.2 cents is actually the cost of an energy efficiency program for the state of Hawaii, OK? So the, the costs are how we give back to the ratepayer. So you probably will see, and I'll be talking about this later on, rebates that are offered, whether it's refrigerators, LEDs, AC, that sort of thing. That is the cost of energy efficiency for an energy efficiency program run through the state of Hawaii. And so we'll be talking, of course, why is this important? Of course, that you guys all know. The cost of energy is extremely expensive in Hawaii, the, the worst, I guess, two time, at least two times the national average, depending on the cost of uh, oil at any given time. Um, at Hawaii Energy, we have a long-term focus on, on the residents. So we, what we, what we want to do is, for ratepayers, we, we want to meet you where you're at in many cases. So especially with uh, low-income, hard-to-reach communities, we actually go to you and do energy efficiency projects for the communities. Uh, the other thing, why, why is it important? A resilient island infrastructure. So the less demand you have after a, a catastrophic event, a natural disaster, um, the, the more energy efficient you are, the easier it is to bounce back or to be more resilient as you come back online. This is the, oh, sorry. So the good news is that uh, energy efficiency is, is the cheapest way to get there. The bad news is that it's challenging. Um, and, and so this is a... Uh, it's a little slide I, I, I've used many times about why energy efficiency is challenging. If it's the cheapest, should be the easiest technologically. The technology has really is, it's advanced a little bit in recent years, but it's a lot of the same stuff we've been doing for a long time. Um, and people are mentally on board with it. So uh, Hawaii Energy, several years ago, um, paid for this fellow, Dr. Uh, Doug McKenzie Moore, to come and give a talk about how attitude and behavior don't really uh, correspond. So he showed survey after survey after survey of people who said, yes, it's important that we save the environment. I want to save money. I want to save you know, energy at the house, whatever. Um, but one after another after another, he showed one study after another showing how that attitude just did not translate into action. Um, and uh, the challenge is, is that when it comes down to it, doing energy efficiency at the house is as simple as putting a blanket on your water heater, uh, fixing a toilet leak, changing some lighting, that sort of thing. But a lot of that is know-how, a lot of it is tools, a lot of it is getting dirty, a lot of it is the frog in boiling water scenario where you're just kind of like, ah, I'll get to that next weekend, I'll get to that next weekend, I'll get to that next weekend. And these uh, things don't ever um, actually happen. 
And the last one is motivation. So a, a landlord has very little motivation to help their renters. A renter has very little motivation to do any upgrades in the house. Um, so as a result, a lot of these things don't happen. So you end up with to-do to lists that kind of look like this. And you quickly cross that one off. Um, so about f after listening to Doug McKenzie Moore, which I think was in 2012, uh, I started thinking about an idea for this business to just do it for people, just come in and just do all these things for people and instead of educating people and trying to get them to uh, spend their weekends putting a water heater blanket on their water heater, measuring it, making sure they get the right one, the right insulation level, et cetera, et cetera. Train ourselves to be, become experts in this and just go in and do this stuff. So this is all the different things we do. Is me doing some water efficiency work over there. It's just a little sampling of all the different types of um, high efficiency lighting. That's a four-year-old picture. Um, LED lighting has come so far since then. So back then in 2013 when I first started doing Pono Home, I was buying LED lights at about $25 a pop at wholesale and then trying to sell them to my customers for 30. And they were not very popular. So we were actually installing CFLs back then. Nowadays, they're a couple of bucks a piece and they pay for themselves in like two, three months. And they have every color and every shape and every um, spectrum. And I'm gonna run you guys through a little thing on your phone here in a minute, um, looking at lighting spectrum. So anyway, so there's a lot of this, you know, stuff that we do. Water conservation, the, there's a watt meter there. We show people how much their like toaster oven uses for electricity. Um, show people how to take the proper tire pressure on their car and figure out what pressure it's supposed to be on their car. And the, the trick is that it's not what it says on the tire, which is fascinating. Um, there's me cleaning some condenser coils on a refrigerator. I still do, I, just, I literally just did one yesterday, so I, I still love to get dirty and do this stuff. Um, so uh, anyway, so yeah, so this is uh, kind of the, the stuff that we do. Uh, since 2014, we've retrofitted over 6,000 homes across uh, f six islands now. Um, we've installed over 100,000 products. So a lot of those are LEDs, but a lot of other things. We have 100% customer satisfaction. And we have a lot of fun doing it. So this is, this is a, a little bit of an old picture of our team, but it's a beach retreat we did last year. Um, so we have a lot of fun doing this stuff. Uh, so what we do is we come out, we'll do a free audit. Uh, we educate people while we're out there. So a lot of times people have questions about their water heater, the timer that, on their water heater, um, the, how their programmable thermostat works. Um, we show them potential upgrades they can do. We research rebates and incentives, many of them from Hawaii Energy. Uh, we show them potential maintenance issues that we can do. Um, cleaning coils on refrigerators and snaking dryer vents and that sort of thing is, is all part of it. Uh, and then if people want us to, we send a proposal and then we actually come out and do the service. Uh, again, you can, you can see me removing a, a small uh, animal from somebody's dryer vent there. Um, and uh, we, get, you know, we get to the hard to reach light bulbs. That's our six foot four technician up there on a, on a 12 foot ladder, uh, changing a ladder in a, in, in a historic house actually on Maui. Um, and you know, here, here's the where the rubber hits the road. Um, so we we did some uh, measurement and verification before and after, and showed very clearly that we dropped uh, uh, this one particular property. We did had had four buildings on it with four different meters. Uh, we showed about a, a 15 to 20 percent drop on average across uh, all these things. And this there's no solar, there's no permits, there's no major renovation. This is this is literally just energy efficiency work. Um, our company also installs organic gardens, but that's a totally separate thing. Um, but the bigger picture for us is that we're looking to uh, kind of expand our model. Um, so we're, we, Pono Home is now franchising. Um, so what we're looking to do is give people an opportunity. There's a lot of people who want these cool, fun jobs like uh, greening homes. Um, and you know, without seeing a franchise opportunity to do something fun and cool and green in the world, um, people might commit their careers to selling fossil fuels or fast food, which a lot of franchises like Subway and McDonald's and stuff like that. Um, so ironically, here's us at a, a recent franchise expo where they literally put us right next to a gas station franchise. Um, we were in the energy section, I think. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, without, without having an option, somebody walking by might get suckered into buying a, a gas station franchise, and then literally they commit their career to selling Cheetos and gasoline, and then they're gonna consistently vote for more fossil fuel subsidies and stuff like that. So we really need to create economic opportunities for people, so that's what we're trying to do at Pono Home. Um, the beauty is that the money stays here in Hawaii uh, with you know, a locally owned business like ours. It helps us achieve the 2045 goals, uh, reduces our cost of living across the board for all Oahu residents, um, and it reduces brain drain. We've, we've hired, uh, we now have 10 employees, um, quite a few graduates from HPU who might otherwise have left, 
uh, our main operations manager, who Tony works with pretty regularly, um, is a local kid, grew up here, uh, went to school on the mainland, wanted to come back, and uh, we were able to give him a, a full-time job, and he's really happy. Um, you know, the companies like McDonald's, nothing against them, but the money all leaves Hawaii. You've got, you know, food in a box that comes in. God knows where it's from. Uh, it's minimum wage jobs. It creates more illness and disease, more public health costs. So we, we think there's just a better way. Anyway, so that's our company. Um, one of the free resources that we offer to people is this website. So if anybody wants to pull this up on your phone, you can right now. So there's a free DIY audit on homeefficiency.com. Uh, where you can check out all sorts of different lighting uh, kinds of um, uh, information and resources, including lighting spectrum, base types, uh, just the, the different shapes of bulbs, the different uh, angles of projection on the light, um, that sort of thing. So if anybody wants to check that out, you're, you're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm.